So Cracker Miko has some beef with Tuesdays with Stories, specifically Mark Normand. Not sure what's going on there, but I have a feeling I kind of know. That particular episode where Luis J. Gomez brought up Cracker Miko to Mark Normand, and Mark Normand went white in the face. He was like shivering and shaking because I guess he was uncomfortable at the thought of Cracker Miko making the song that was ripping into his quote-unquote friends. Really and truly, I'd imagine he's probably just like conscious that maybe he will be next on the chopping blocks. Maybe that's the case. Either way, it was a weird reaction because I'm a fan of Mark Normand. Um, I like his comedy. I like him on Tuesday with Stories. I think he's a pretty, um, what you call it, funny dude. And he's a good podcast host and shit. And he generally seems to be really silly all the time. So I was kind of taken aback when he like reacted very nervously and and almost panicked when the name Krakamika was brought up. Like he was very, very scared. And I couldn't work out why. I was like, why is he so worried and scared? Like, aren't you a comedian? Aren't you like a bit of an edgy comedian too? You just have to push the line and shit and just be cheeky and whatever and just fuck around and fool around. Like, why are you like this worried about some dude making a parody rap song about some of your friends? Like, why, why, why would it bother you? But then I guess, as I said previously, he's more worried about himself. Well, anyway, his name was brought up again. Krakamika's name was brought up once again on Tuesday with Stories and he reacted just as badly as he did when he was on Skanks or when he was on a Legion of Skanks. Not, not Legion of Skanks, when he was on Rap, I think. He reacted just as badly. Look at this clip. This is courtesy of Krakamika's Twitter that I ripped. So big up Krakamika. But look at how Mark Norman responds when Krakamika's name is brought up. It's a scary feeling. By the way, you see that crack of Miko? Oh, Oof. yeah. That guy's vicious. Oof. Yeah, that Pang Dang line really hit. Look at that face. You see his face immediately. Immediately when Joe List brought up crack of Miko's name. Look at Mark Norman's face. It's a scary feeling. By the way, you see that crack of Miko? Oh, Oof. yeah. That guy's vicious. Oof. Look at that face. Like, why is he so scared? Did Krakamiko like fuck his girl? Did Krakamiko beat him up in, a, in in days gone by? Like, why is he so like nervous? I'm I don't know. I'm kind of disappointed. I like Mark Norman, and he's like shivering in his boots, and I can't work out why. It's so bizarre to me. Oof. Yeah, that Pang Dang line really hit me right in the taint. <laughs> Yikes! I was I'm ducking. I, I hope uh, we love you, Crack. <laughs> and, uh, you're our guy. <laughs> trying his best to pretend like everything's okay but it's not okay <laughs> one more time oh my god they hit me right in the taint yikes i was i'm ducking i, I hope uh, we love you crack <laughs> and, uh, you're yeah. our guy baby i like crack more than hunter biden what <laughs> well we'll talk later i don't yeah, want to yeah. get in because he's he's gonna be jerking off to this he's terrifying he's licking his chops right now he's gonna do you next chuckster you better watch out uh, but any farts to that crack of He's so scared, isn't it? He? He's so scared. Miko. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on there, man. I really don't know what's going on there. Yo, big up the stream chat, Ricky Picture Coiler. What's good? What's good, my guy? The word is Mark has pretty hardcore blog back in the day. He's stressed about a blog. What well, a blog where he said like racy, dicey, dicey stuff. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. If that's true, <laughs> you know, you know, Crack Amico's on that way back machine. You know, Crack Amico's on that way back machine. You know, he's on that way back machine, digging, digging for some evidence, digging for some material for the bars. You know, he's on, he's on some of that. He's on that way back machine. Fuck. Actually, I'm, su I'm surprised people haven't. But I guess Tim Dillon had one, in it? Didn't Tim Dillon have like... No, I think Tim Dillon's blog... No, Tim Dillon had a Tumblr, didn't he? I think he had a Facebook also where he used to post on it and also like a Tumblr where he used to like write crazy articles. I think that might be... I think that might be the reason why he was friends with Rogan, Tim. I think Rogan saw one of Tim Dillon's like Facebook posts and shit and then shared it and then it kind of like turned into a situation. But yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on with Mark Norman, man. Like, I don't like this like scaredy cat version of Mark Norman where he's worried, you know, that he's not gonna, <laughs> that he's gonna get destroyed by this guy that writes like parody rap songs and stuff. It's like, look, just relax, man. It's not that deep, brother. Relax, relax, please relax, please relax, man. It's not that deep. Yeah, 
I had a pretty um I had a pretty uh decent little blog spot back in the day, but I deleted mine like an idiot. I don't know why. I shouldn't have deleted it. I can still find some posts on my on if you go on like way back and shit, but I wish I would have kept it because it was pretty decent. I had I had quite a bit of like, you know, nonsensical posts on there talking about shit and whatever it is just ranting and rambling about nonsense. I think I might have done some reviews of like burger shops and shit back in the day on Blogspot. But yeah, big up Blogspot, man. Blogspot was sick. I remember spending hours and hours like, you know, customizing the theme, you know, learning how to like code with HTML and shit, fucking around with that. Like, I fucking love that shit, honestly. A little carousel on the side with pictures from Flickr and shit, different fonts on the fucking tie on the header. Like, I loved all that stuff, man. I swear. So fun. So fun. <laughs> But yeah, I'm disappointed with this. I'm disappointed in Mark Norman. He's letting me down. I don't like this scaredy cat version of him. I want him to let his nuts hang and go bar for bar with fucking Crack Amigo. It's not that deep. The guy's just making parody rap songs like relax. We're going to laugh. We're going to kiki. But for the most part, your fans probably won't even give a fuck anyway. But he seems so worried. Like, and I don't understand why. But I guess what thing he mentioned before about his having a dicey blog might be the reason why. Um, especially with a kid on the way or I think he's got a kid already and he's married so maybe he's thinking like his whole life can come crashing down because of this one blog he wrote in 2006 <laughs> which is quite funny isn't it <laughs> imagine you just got your career started no you just got your career where you want it to be you just got yourself settled down you're about to marry your fiance and then suddenly some random parody rapper right decides to just dig up some dirt on you <laughs> from your old defunct tumbler that no one knew existed and now suddenly you're having to like get stressed and now you're worried that you might have to end up being a guest on the fire and the kid or something you know what i mean you might have to join fucking golden hour because you can get cancelled <laughs> mark norman doesn't want to doesn't want to end up being brendan schaub's co-host isn't it? <laughs> he's worried <laughs> <laughs> he's really fucking worried so i understand i get it but it's just a bit sad to see i'm not gonna lie it is a bit sad to see um yes 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 big up big up bossa big up for smashing the like button appreciate it brother everybody else please join bossa as well and smash that like button you get me jack donahue jr nobody worries more about cancer culture than mark is completely oh yeah true true big up jack donahue jr i did see people on the subreddit comment on that actually i saw a few people basically say that about him like being obsessed with fucking counterculture my only pet peeve about mark normand and this is something that is like a running thing with me in podcasts in general i think it's just the way that i kind of like view life and maybe like manhood and shit i don't like how helpless he is sometimes mark normand the constant like stress and and like panic that comes with him missing or just about getting his flights like it gives me anxiety listening to it and he seems to always run into the same issues it's always something woke up late didn't have the boarding pass miss went to the wrong airport went to the wrong terminal like it's just like bruh constantly it's like every fucking time he goes on tour on the weekend there's always some story some issue with the fucking flights this that change this this that the hotel was this this broke it's like pfft. it honestly makes me like it honestly gives me anxiety i swear to god and i'm not really an anxious person and it just annoys me because it seems like he just doesn't have his life in control or it's you know it's almost like he kind of enjoys that that craziness of his life like you know figuring stuff out on the fly it's just like oh yeah yeah like and i think I, I, that that's part of the reason why i find it hard to like watch tiger belly as much as I like Bobby Lee, I, I love Bobby Lee. He's really funny. And I love his dynamic with fucking, um, with the whole of the team. I love him on fucking Bad Friends with Adrian Santino. They got great chemistry. But I find it hard to consume Bobby Lee content for the same reason. He's like an adult baby, you know? Like, exactly, man-child. He's like a man-child, Bobby Lee. And Mark Norman's the same. But they almost enjoy that helplessness. It's like part of their brand. Oh my God, you never guess what? I missed another flight. Ooh. It's like why oh, i had to pay for another grand for another flight i had to do this i lost my passport my passport was expired you know like huh 
I was meant to go to New York, New York. I meant to go to New York or New York fucking airport. I end up at JFK. It's like, huh? Oh yeah, 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 man. I don't know. I just, I just can't do it, man. I think because I've been, and it's probably a toxic thing too. Maybe because of where I've been brought up, it was I wasn't really allowed to like be a child. You know, growing up in the family that I was growing grow up in, like we had to grow up quickly. Like my parents didn't tolerate any of that baby shit. So maybe that's why I'm like this. I just can't. I don't like people that like enjoy being babies and children and shit. It's just annoying. So that's the only reason. That's the only thing I don't really like about children's with stories. That's the only thing that's kind of annoying. I don't really notice Mark Norman's propensity to always talk about cancel culture, but I did notice people on the subreddit complain about it. That it's made like literally some of them are like tuning out. They can't listen to it anymore. But um, I just hate the fucking panic of stories or oh, the rent renting a car panic something happened there it's like there's always something it's like god almighty like grow up oh I, am i gonna get an assistant no i don't need one it's too much money but then next week another fucking issue it's a f- exhausting but then maybe that's part of also being a comedian maybe that's a part of the brand part of the you know requirements of being a comedian because they're all basically like they're all basically children if you think about it all successful comedians are, have a very kind of like adolescent sort of like side about them and they kind of um encourage not to grow up you know Burt Kreischer being a good example you're kind of you make your money based on your ability to be a, a you know I won't say a loser but like you know a little bit of an embarrassment that's what makes you rich um and it helps with the comedy because you kind of do the thing that other people probably couldn't get away with and they kind of live vicariously through you maybe I don't know. Either way, um, I want Mark Norman to grab his balls and to let them hang and stop being scared of Cracker Mico. It's not that deep. If he makes a little rap song about you, laugh about it, ignore it, it's okay. But I don't like this, like, shivering in the corner, Mark Norman. When he hears Cracker Mico's name, he's like, you know, he's wide eyed, like, as he is there. Where is it? Look, he's fucking wide eyed. Look, look at that. When he hears the name, he's like, Jesus Christ. Look at him. <laughs> he's legitimately scared and i can't work out why fucking hell fucking hell